What's up everybody, how's it going and welcome to another episode of Car Rant. Today we are picking up where we left off on the Metropolitan, starting some upgrades, and more importantly, the stretch kit. So over the last several episodes of us working on the Met, you would have noticed that we put a lot of importance on making sure the engine's running, engine maintenance, new variators, and everything else. We've done a lot with the power and trying to at least eke out a little bit more. Now it's time for us to get to the stretch kit and more importantly, some braking power to work with the new power band that we have. That said, you already know about our tires. We got some new MMG tires for these stock wheels, but now we've also got, boom, new NCY brake shoes. Check these things out. These are very, very aggressive, very meaty. I'm very excited to put these to use because these are gonna help us really stop, especially considering that right now you pull that brake and it takes a bit for it to slow down. This is gonna definitely, definitely help us to achieve a much safer braking distance, especially once we add a little bit more weight with the stretch kit on. And before we can get started on the brakes, we gotta take off the old wheel so we can replace it with the new one. This is actually a stock ruckus wheel. They have the same exact hub bearing area. If I flip it around, you'll see that that is in fact the case. What I wanted the ruckus wheels for was they're actually a little bit fatter, so it has a slight stretch to it with this already stock setup. It'll just help with traction, feeling grip in more places, and all in all being a more comfortable ride just because the wider rear wheel, stability, y'all get it. So we got our brake, I'm gonna stash it inside of our handy dandy basket. Wheel is ready. Unfortunately, I'm having issues breaking off this rear wheel uh, to the point where I even tried starting the engine and just turning the motor against it. It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be honest, it's not working. So I'm gonna have to call in some reinforcements to help break that off. But we are, in fact, ditching this craptastic exhaust. It's literally less than an inch. It is terrible. And we are getting a nice Yoshimura. It's gonna actually come up into the fender. But the reason why I went with the Yoshimura is because we're extending the frame by nine and a half inches. So pretty much that thing will either be hitting this or just barely poking out the side. Yes, the NCY nine and a half inch extension kit is on its way. When that arrives, I'm gonna tear all this back apart after just putting it back together a couple episodes ago. Uh, you gotta love it, man. This is the mod life. Also, a little something else that we've been doing. You guys see the bright yellow headlights there. Well, I like the yellow headlight look. It's classic to me, so. I used what was left in my last can to kind of start tinting the cover of this, but then bought another one. You guys have never seen this before. This is like the OG GDM lens tinter. You'll want to find this. It's not cheap, but the stuff is good. I mean, you see how dark yellow that is, right? That was after several passes. Almost a whole can of this on that. So we're not going to go quite as dark, I don't think. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. We'll see. But I'm going to take apart this housing again and clean out the bird dookie that happened while I was in the house and uh, get to work. As always, the best stuff happens when I don't have the camera running. We cracked the nut and I have a very, very unique way of doing it. Might be the way you're supposed to, but I don't know. But if you remember from a couple episodes ago, I told you about this guy. This is a variator puller tool. I used it by just sticking it into the clutch bell and using the actual bell itself as a resistance point in addition to the actual brake. So it wasn't like all the pressure was on this, just whatever the brake couldn't handle, it did. And uh, hello, it's been cracked. So we can get this wheel off, check out how bad these brakes are, and get rolling. Got it. Oh, baby. Whew. You can see quite clearly, those brakes are shot. Old and busted, new hotness. <laughs> like, there is some material there, but the material up there is weak at best. The inside of our wheel wasn't cleaned at all either. And this has been done before, I can tell. So, yeah, we're definitely better off with upgrading to these nice, fat NCYs. 
slotted like these are going to do the job way more efficiently than those things did so our package from the ruck shop has arrived I'm so excited because this should be all that's left to get metro stretched oh man got the new ncy rear shock it is what the throttle cable yep new throttle cable this is a new fuel tubing to get the actual stretch length that we need holy cow other than this piece here which has some of the bolt parts that we need and everything else that is a huge stretch like we say numbers and we don't realize what they really mean sometimes right that right there is a big stretch nine and a half inches is what this is going to give us which means that we'll be able to use this Yoshimoto exhaust because it'll actually fit although I will be honest it is very heavy so while it's not as heavy as the one that was on the bike in my opinion um yeah this is this is a thick boy for sure but really excited to see what it's going to sound like look who decided to come help us out today sup yeah yeah <laughs> We're gonna get this thing ready to stretch it out. The key things is we're taking the bolts out of here to stretch it. So we're gonna get this set up so that it'll stretch. This will be where our big frame extension gets mounted to. Right now we're taking the fairing off so we can get the exhaust installed because I wanna hear what it sounds like before I take it apart. John, you got it off? Is it all the way off? He's got it manipulated, there you go. Yeah! Sticker bomb. Ooh. That actually could be like a space helmet. <laughs> so we've got spacers set up to help space out the framework a little bit. That way it doesn't stick so close to the wheel area. Because when we do put the stretch on, we want the exhaust to clear our fairings. So that way we don't have to worry about the fairings melting or catching on fire or anything like that. So now it's the fun part. I have to be underneath. We're going to mount up this side. So I'm going to very carefully, very carefully. Carefully. Mount up on this side and get the bracket set in so we can put the exhaust on straight. He's a new guy at this, so We're he's good. learning. We're good to go? Alright, so here's how this works. The brake is engaged, right? The key is in. You're gonna do this. You ready? Go ahead. So the key is in, turn it on to on. The brake is engaged. This is the kill switch. You flip that over and push the start button. The fun begins. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do. Let's do. So we got the rear wheel on. It's all set. It's situated. We got it figured out. It was before kind of set a little bit loose so that we could do other things if we needed to. The Yoshi sticks out really far to the side as a result of using the stretched out arm. But it is what it is. We went ahead and broke off part of the plastic because that's going to be in the way when we do the stretch. And now we're getting ready to actually take the engine off. We got a little logs over there to the side that we're going to use to set the engine on it that way the engine's one complete unit we don't have to worry about it um once the engine is off we need to do some mock-ups there are a few things that we will have to cut a few things that we're going to have to reapply so there's a lot of bit of work but yeah it won't be too bad we got a we got a few days to get this done a few days all right day two two of doing the stretch kit today we are going to be severing the engine from the actual chassis we're going to go ahead and start unconnecting things here that way stuff's out of the way we can grind safe and not worry about hitting say the fuel line or a vacuum line that we can't really replace right now so the fun's going to begin we got a grinder we got grinding bits and pieces we have a John with bread with a strawberry bread. We already got the shock put on because we're like, you know what, let's just test it and see how it's going to fit. And as is, like, this lowered down would have been cool with just the low boy shock, but uh, no. I'm definitely stoked and excited to see where this is going to go because that right there will sit somewhere out here. Like, this is going to be a much longer scooter, which means I'm going to actually have to backfill part of my yard with dirt. Yeah, it'll be that'll be the easiest job ever. Throttle's off, brake is off, center brace for the engine's off, and the shock is off. 
Now we have the very, very nerve-wracking part of moving the engine back so we can start marking up parts of our frame here, start cutting the grinder, and hopefully be able to actually get our stretch kit put on today. Let's all be honest, this is the worst part about building any car or bike. Yeah, it's just wiring. For dummy test reasons, this is kind of close to where it's going to sit. It'll actually sit out even a little bit longer now that I think about it. Got everything severed, everything disconnected, except for like the stator stuff, but we're going to leave it connected. We're just going to work around it, if you will. But uh, to demonstrate the difference, that was the original one versus the new one. Old and busted. Got to bring it back for old reasons. Old and busted, new hotness. You versus the man she tells me not to worry about. <laughs> Do you not remember? Have you forgotten the ways? Maybe. That's why I was... Sorry, give me this. My philosophy. Parts you don't like? Disrespect! I totally forgot about that. <laughs> So what is the current situation? Well, so I notched the frame, but now I'm trying to cut where my notch was. I'm going to have to remove the arm guard to do that, just because it's really close to the actual frame itself. Once we have that cut, we'll mock it again. If it fits perfectly, uh, I may pull it out and grind off just a little bit for a buffer room. But other than that, we'll be done with the middle section. Then we get to the hard part, which is going to be the rear shock. And one, it's very tough to get into that space with a grinder, so there's a lot of chatter marks and unintentional grinds, I will be real. It's still very strong and very much sound, well, so I don't have to worry about that. But we are trying to get a little bit more space out of this. I also went ahead and ground down the face of this so that it was considerably more narrow. That way I can actually fit it up into this space. The only problem is we got to now whack out some of this part of the tower and also down in here. So that way there's a little bit more mobility for the rock back and forth as it's going to need to with the suspension. We have cut our big hole for the actual, it's not a swing arm, but we're gonna call it the swinging trailing arm thing for the shock to bolt to. So we've now got that moved up. Piece is a little hot, but we went ahead and made a couple of edits. Number one, we chopped a big chunk of it off here because unlike the ruckus frame, this section does need a lot of editing. We also added this triangular notch so that when we come in here, it will pretty much sit flush and rock in this space a bit. I know it's not un not entirely even, but that triangle cut now allows it to mate a little bit more securely up against the chassis. So this will be done. I'm gonna get some spray paint on there just to seal off the metal. That way the metal doesn't rust. And now that the midsection's done, I'm gonna start mocking up the midsection and get our throttle and brake cables on. Got the center frame in. Look how much longer this is, right? So this was here. Like, just put that in perspective. The head was literally almost touching the fuel cell. We <laughs> chef. The only tricky thing is we're gonna to have to take apart the throttle and the brake so that we can actually take and put on the new brake line and also the new uh, throttle assembly. But that's, that's not that difficult of a task. We just can't put all the fairings back together until everything's put back on. You ready for this? You yeah, sure? All right, day three, we are on trying to get everything with this done. We have got the brake disconnected, so now we're going through and it's just gonna be a plug up job. Everything gets plugged back together, everything gets put back together. We're not gonna put the fairings on yet. We're gonna do that last. So we want to make sure that everything is solid, connections are good, our gauges work correctly, all of that stuff before we keep going. That way we know we didn't break anything, and more importantly, everything's connected right. One thing I will mention is that here on this whole brake assembly, we did cheat, okay? Normally you're supposed to remove it from the handle and then undo it from this junction box, which as you can tell, ours is a little severed. That's because we went ahead and actually cut right through here off 
just because we only need to remove the rear brake. We're not doing anything with the front yet. The front is going to be a project for another day. So for now, that's going to stay. But now we have the entire brake line that's just going to kind of hang out in this area. It's obviously very much thick and reinforced and everything else. So with us cutting it there, it's just going to be a direct line straight to the brake and then we'll adjust it on the back end as needed. But otherwise, this is all just plug and play stuff at this point and then we're going to go ahead and clean all of this just dust from grinding and cutting off. So we got everything plumbed up. Everything seems good, tight, ready to go. We do need to adjust the brake. We're going to find the MacGyver solution for that. This is actual high performance engine coolant. This is meant for scooters. Specifically this mix anyway is meant for scooters. There's way more than we need inside of this. So we're going to drain the coolant that's in the bike now because the stuff that's in there, if you remember a couple episodes ago, is all engine coolant for a car. So higher heat, all of that stuff. This is meant for a scooter because it's not as strong a mix with the glycol and everything else. There's a whole list of chemical reasons, but just know this is the stuff for this. So now we're going to drain this out while we wait for the gasket for our exhaust to seal up and then start it for the first time. Wow, the pup is so quiet now. All right, moment the truth. Wow, that front brake is really tight. Stretch is done, except for the brake. But once that's done, we did it. <laughs> so, this sounds way better. It doesn't have much more power, but it's also way more stable. Definitely more comfortable. Cause like I have back issues because you know trunk is over here. But yeah, this feels great. This is much better. I mean, every in place. This has a lot more girth to it than it did before, as far as like sound goes. Got it now the car back in now that we changed the fueling and everything else. But I mean it's solid. This thing's good. We'll have to do some GoPro footage in another video because hey, we can't really take it anywhere, but like even the headlights working. We're done with phase one boys. Phase one is done. sound great. I mean, this is, like that just sounds good to me. But with all that said, 
thank you guys for watching. Thank you all for checking us out. Any questions about how we did what we did, leave them down below. We'll answer them as we get them. And we'll see you guys next time.